virtualization and virtual machines. Here at the Backyard Tech Channel, the default is to go to ESXi from VMware. I run VMware package here at home. But there's one virtualization platform, according to all reports now, that is better than it ever has been. It's product review time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, we're going to take a look at Microsoft's Hyper-V. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It is product review time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Thursday and Hyper-V from Microsoft. Okay, my previous experiences with Hyper-V have been less than flattering. Most of the times I've come across it, it's been a pain to use and or configure. However, the latest reports are saying that Hyper-V now is better than it ever has been. So, I thought we'd do a product review of it and have a bit of a sticky back at it. Now, I've installed it into Windows 10 Pro on the main PC. Look, normally with hypervisors, I prefer bare metal. You know, ESXi, something like that. But, I'm willing to try something different. So let's head on, let's fire up OBS, let's head on over to the main PC and give Hyper-V the Backyard Tech Channel treatment, going to have a sticky peek at it. Let's get into it. Alright, so here's Hyper-V. The interface seems a bit different to what I remember it being. Alright, well, what do we do here? Um, now, okay, so... I've got Debian 9 coming down, which will be all right. So we'll just, we'll create a new virtual machine. Okay, uh, what do we call it? Let's call it Debian 9. All right, the virtual machine supports 32 and 64 bit guest operating systems and provides virtual hardware, which has been available in all previous versions of Hyper-V, the virtual machine generation provides support for newer virtualization features, has UEFI based firmware and requires support supported 64-bit guest operating systems. Um, I think I'll just run generation 1. 4096 default switch 127 gig will be all right. Um, okay, so I'll have to wait until uh, that finishes downloading, which will be in a few minutes. So that'll be all right. So let's um, let's just make sure I've set this up right. Putting it into documents, Hyper-V, virtual hard drives. All right. How long has that got to go? A couple of minutes. How quick is that coming down? Two and a half meg. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So we'll just wait. Oops, I've forgotten to do all that. The drive will come from there. I'll just have to wait. <coughs> How about uh, instead of just sitting here? Oh no, actually that's what I was going to say too. I'll do a video on this um, later as well. Um, but one of the bugbears I've got now, as much as I love using VMware, there's a bug in it that really stinkingly irritates me when it comes to audio. Now, I'm going to do a video on it later, but it's probably one of the biggest bugbears I've got with VMware's virtual platform. Um, it, it irritates me. Now, 
I've had people say just use VirtualBox. I don't like VirtualBox. It, 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 I'm a bare metal hypervisor person. That's why I use VMware. Um, I, I don't know that Hyper-V is bare metal because I think Hyper-V you need to run it with server or in this case Win 10 Pro because it doesn't work in Win 10 Home so you've got to have Win 10 Pro to do it um, I mean I'd you know bare metal is probably better than locally hosted if anything else but you know it, it really is a bugbear I'll do a video on it later today um, because a video I plan to do has fallen in a heap, so I'm going to do a different video. Okay, I'm not going to waste any more time, any more video time. We'll come back once Debbie and Nine's finished downloading. All right, so Deb Nine's finished. I'll go with that one. Okay. All right, so. Let's see what this does now. Let's make sure I've got that right. Finish. Goes off, creates the drive, configures the drive. Right on. So, how do I... Hyper-V settings. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that looks alright. Numa? Good grief. Did I see that right? Numa spanding. Good grief. <laughs> Last time I heard of Numa was Cray and SGI. Alright. So, uh, I suppose I've got to connect to it, do I? Oh, I see. Just opens it in a console window. Alright, see what it does. Oh. Well, that's not so good. Connection info. That's not really that crash hot. It's a little window. It opens it in an RDC type connection. Alright, well. Graphical install. Oh. Does it want to work or not? Oh, it will work. Okay. Let's, uh. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, not in the US. American English is right. It'll be interesting to see how much of a load that it's putting on the main PC. Let's have a look. Okay. Performance. A 7.8 gig of 32 and 18% of the CPU. So it's not it's not too draggy. Whether it detects the network's another problem. It'll be interesting to see if it picks it up. Bit of a shame it's in such a small window though. You know what will annoy me? Is if audio through Linux runs on Hyper-V. Whoa! Mm, now that's a problem. Um, sand manager. Default network. Oh, I didn't do the network properly. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So I mucked that up something serious. Let's try that again. Huh? new virtual switch uh. 
main net. Whoops. Okay, I forgot to do that. That's my fault. Oh. Shouldn't. Oh, it did. Ugh. Back again. Okay. So now I've got to go and um, that's the one I wanted to use. So hyper V settings. Change the settings of the damn virtual. There we are. Settings. Network. Um, okay. Uh, no, it's got to be main net. Apply that. Okay, done. Try again. Go. Debian Knight. How do you... Oh, that's not so good though. I mean, that's tiny. Alright, graphical install. Let's try it again. See if we've got the network right this time. <laughs> yes, I know everyone's laughing and giggling at me that I made a stuff up like that, but hopefully... Oh, Australia! Now let's see if it'll detect the network. It, in theory, it should. Not as I said in theory. <laughs> you know what will really irritate me? Is if Linux gives audio through Hyper-V, because then I will be annoyed. Because it's not like I can afford to buy Server 2016 and run Hyper-V. You know, if Hyper-V was bare metal, which I, I don't think it is. I think it's uh, locally hosted. I don't think there's a, I don't think it's actual bare metal in the same vein as it got network. Okay. Well, we're not going on to a domain. I get cranky about that, don't I? <laughs> I don't live in anywhere else in the world. I live in Victoria. Uh, yeah, got it. 136 gig, all files in one partition, home partition. Oh, yeah. I know, I could do a custom partition. I'm just taking the easy way out. Let's go. Yes. Now, what I want to have a look at here is the load on the main PC. Performance. It's using 21% of that, 7.8 gig of 32 gig of RAM. Now that's running, that's with Windows running and the virtual running. Actually, we haven't even looked at Debian 9. But like I said, I'll be really annoyed if audio works on here because that'll that'll annoy me. <laughs> that'll give me the screaming irrits. Because it's not like I can afford to go and buy Server 2016. I could probably do it with Server 2012 if I wanted to, but... Uh. 
I want servant. I, I, I prefer bare metal. I mean, the reports say Hyper V is better now than it ever has been, but I don't know. Okay, full core. See, this is this is where it, 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 it's quad core eight thread, but for some reason Windows calls it a eight core CPU. It's not. So the memory's up at seven point eight gig on thirty two. Memory's dynamically running. CPU's at twenty. Let's open the resource monitor. Let's check that, that's fine. Alright. So, let's... Um, large. So you can see there... It is spiking up a little bit. So here are our... This is why it says it's 8 cores. It's not. It's quad core 8 thread. So, active on... Cores... 1, 2, 3... Right, core 0... CPU 0, 1... Two, three, and four. So five of the eight cores are heavy. Total load, and it's it's not too bad. It it it's workable, but it's not too bad. Now I did just get the XFCE CD, not the DVD of it. So I it's not bad. I would prefer if it was bare metal. I mean, if Hyper-V was like a standalone bare metal, like ESXi or Zen or something, if it turns out that audio is available through it for Linux, I'd probably migrate to it. Um, I think you can... Oh, I don't actually know. Can you actually connect to a remote server? I'll know, I'll, I'll, I'll know if audio crops up because we'll go and visit my YouTube channel and I'll be able to see it through OBS if the audio comes up. Twenty-one percent. Seven point eight gig of RAM. I don't want to leave VMware to run my Microsoft product, but yeah. nearly done. We'll do a proper setup product review of Deb 9, but in the near future. But I just want to see how Hyper V runs it. <coughs> going to be like, hey, Backyard's finally running a normal Linux system. He's running Debian 9 and not crap open man driver. <laughs> it's amazing how much flack I cop for liking open man driver. I can't get over it sometimes. No, not at this stage. No. Still got to install everything.
Should have known this had happened, shouldn't I? <laughs> when you think about it, I'm recording an OBS, uh, Windows 10, which is heavy as we know, and I'm running Hyper-V, and yeah, I mean, the CPU's doing all right, the memory's sitting quite happy, I and mean, there's not a lot of load on the system, as you can see. Take some of the averages. System man's taking most of the CPU. Uh, OBS is pulling a fair bit, but the computer's not struggling. At least not yet. <laughs> I don't notice I said just yet. Popularity contest, are you kidding me? Ah, uh, yeah, all right. We go back down to that for the moment. Once this is installed, we'll fire up the web browser and open up my YouTube channel, and then we'll see if there's audio. I'll be I'll be annoyed if there is, believe me. <laughs> but as I said, I mean I much prefer bare metal, but I don't think I, I in fact I know Hyper V is not a standalone bare metal. I think you've got to have it with server to do it. I, someone correct me, if it is bare metal and you can get audio from Linux across it. I may consider moving to Hyper V, but it'd want to be it'd want to be a hell of a lot better than Workstation than VMware. It'd want to be a lot better. Okay, well, we've seen Debian install before. I'll save some video time. We'll come back when we're closer to finish. Much like um, Workstation 12 and ESXi, there's integration, as you can see, between the virtual and obviously the the host the problem i have i guess with locally hosted virtualization is unless your computer's really good it can put a strain on the OS, on the host os from a hardware resource point of view and as you can see down here there's a fair bit of load some of the cpus are getting parked some are not take a while yeah we'll come back when we're closer to okay so we're nearly done here finally like I said it'd be interesting to see how this performs it's not pulling too much off the uh, off the computer which is interesting I'm actually fairly surprised about this but anyway that bring that back up grub install hopefully your Thursdays are traveling well all right now let's see what this does Oops. Well, it's small screen, which is problematic. I'm not keen on that. At least with ESXi and Workstation 12, it goes full screen. Oh, hello. Maybe it will. Nice if it did. Oh, okay. What are you going to do? Use default. Okay. So there's Debian 9. It's 
not too bad. CXFCE. See if we can get that display any bigger. It's a bit small. Oh, that's it. Alright, well, let's see if we get audio. Doesn't much look like it though, there's no volume control up there. Wide connection one, where to get a... Connection information, took it straight off there, so that's good. Alright. Let's see if we get any audio. Awfully slow. There I am. Do we get audio? No. No, we don't. Alright. Well, that might be because it can't find an audio card. Pulse audio. Oh. Okay. Well. We got any um, sound features? No. So. Pulse audio didn't work. I'm not keen on the fact it's not a big screen, I can tell you that. Save sessions, log out. Oh. Go in this root and see what it does. Default config. Claims to have a floppy disk, that doesn't sound right. Maybe I didn't install Pulse Audio. I'm not, um, I'm not sold on it yet. I mean, if I can get audio remote through it, I'll be happy, but there was no audio come through then, and I'm, I'm watching OBS on this, so... Pulse audio does not seem to be... doesn't seem to be running. Oh, obviously, it's not there, uh, which is a bit of a bugger. Oh well, there's uh, there's Microsoft Hyper V. Um, look, I am, geez, that was quick shutdown, wasn't it? I am mildly more impressed with it. I, it is it is better um, than it ever has been. Um, but uh, I don't know. Whoops! I don't want to do that remove that. Um, I mean, there's no way of... There's no audio there. Which is a little bit... You know, I mean, there should be audio. There's the video adapter, a network adapter, a SCSI controller. No audio. It's a bit of a bugger, isn't it? Oh well, can't be helped really, but there's Hyper V. Look, all up. <coughs> I don't know. It is better, but it's really. I don't know. 
I don't know. I'll, I'll have to play with it a bit more, but we'll have to see how it goes. There's Hyper V. There's Debian 9 as well. We'll have a better look at Debian 9 at a later date, but there's a Hyper V video. I don't know. I don't know whether it will. I don't know whether I can do audio. I mean, ideally, I'd like to have audio across all my virtual platforms. Sometimes it doesn't happen. I have to see. Anyway, there we go. Product review of Hyper-V. Hyper it is better than it has been. Not sure about the whole thing, though. Stick around. More coming up throughout the day. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.